Hello, my name is George and today I want to talk to you about the origin of evil. Can we know the origin of evil? Does the presence of evil in this world really negate the existence of God? Is it possible to accommodate both the existence of God and the existence of evil within a coherent explanation of life? There could hardly be more fundamental and perplexing questions. Our world is preoccupied with the issue of origins. To find the truth about origins, we must go to the Bible. God is perfect, and everything He made was perfect. In the Bible, we read of a time when evil did not exist. The perfect peace and harmony reigned and happiness pervaded the universe. Of all created beings, the angels were the most intelligent and possessed great beauty and strength. One angel stood out in wisdom and beauty. He, the most beautiful and wisest of all created beings, once bore the name Lucifer, son of the morning, which means day star. This unique angel in heaven first cherished sin. Though all his glory was from God, Lucifer came to regard as pertaining to himself. Not satisfied with his present position, he ventured to covet the homage due to the Creator. Instead of seeking to make God supreme in the affections of all created beings, he endeavored to secure their service and loyalty to himself thus inducing them to rebel against God and His law. Lucifer's pride was the origin of all evil. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. This angel's rebellion was both deceptive and contrary to the natural laws of heaven. Two opposing principles, righteousness and iniquity, cannot exist together. And thus the rebellion of Satan culminated in a spiritual war in heaven. Christ commanded the loyal angels and was victorious over Satan and his host. Satan charged upon the government of God that discord his own course has caused in heaven. He declared all evil to be the result of the divine administration. He claimed that it was the object to improve the law of God. Therefore God permitted him to demonstrate the nature of his claims, to show the consequences of his purposed changes in the divine law. His own work was permitted to condemn him, because Satan claimed from his first that he was not in rebellion, the whole universe must see the deceiver unmasked. The good news for us today is that the end of sin and all evil is at hand. It will be destroyed in the most effective way and will never more raise its ugly head. Satan, the root of sin, and his followers, like its branches, will be eternally destroyed. It is very important for us to recognize that evil is not simply a type of behavior. In fact, evil becomes a motivating force behind a behavior when it is a function of intent. It is easy for us to judge behavior that is destructive, cruel, or immoral as being evil, but behavior that outwardly seems to produce much good can still be considered evil in God's sight unless it's undertaken in submission to Him for the purpose of glorifying Him. The end does not justify the means with God. Motives must be pure to make actions pure. It is the motive that fuels our behavior that really counts, no matter how good the result looks to us or to others. So, evil is a spiritual power, a motivating force that it began with a choice. It originated when a created being demanded to be treated as if he was the creator, and it went downhill from there. The consequences of that choice are suffered by each one of us every day. It took the death of God's own Son to reverse its effect on us. And then only if we choose to allow it, knowing the origin of evil and its consequences, it leaves a pivotal question. What choices will each one of us make in life?